Hello, I'm Elfie So, and this is my Learn to Sew resource channel where all are welcome. Today I'm going to take you along whilst I sew a 50s inspired shirt dress. I'm making this in a dark blush pink viscous shelly with white polka dots. I had three meters in my stash, but this pattern actually called for five meters. So I had to do a little bit of messing around with the pattern, trying to get the layout right. I made a few adjustments, which I'll talk about when I come to them, but I managed to make it work. I'm going to keep talking to a minimum and just allow you to enjoy the process, but I will leave links in the description with finer details for those interested. As always, do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this video. It really helps me continue to create more content for you and you'll hear about new exciting things first. working with three meters rather than five meters of fabric I had to adjust the skirt panels in order to make it fit. I combined the side skirt panels to the back panel and the front panel halving their width at the same time. 
This reduced the hem of the skirt by about a metre and a half and made it fit on three metres of fabric rather than five, which was what I needed. The bodice is made up from a back and two symmetrical front pieces. There are eight darts in total. I really like this combination as I think it allows you to get a really nice fit with simple adjustments. As I worked, I pressed each dart and overlocked the raw seam edges to ensure a neat, lasting finish. is constructed from two identical pieces, one interfaced for structure. My fabric was quite fluid so you'll see I used lots of pins here to keep it from moving. I wouldn't usually use this many with a simple cotton as is advised for the pattern but this Shelley really has lots of drape to it so it held everything in place so it all lined up when it was moving under my machine. The collar is made, turned inside out and then basted to the neckline of the bodice by hand.
attaches in one continuous length along the front edge of the left side of the bodice, around the neckline and then down the right side bodice front edge. It is then turned under to the inside and all the raw edges, including the collar edge, is sandwiched and hidden within. As I'm pinning here, I'm matching points such as the shoulder seams, the corners of the bodice and the bottom line of the bodice so that it all matches up neat. Pressing the facing, you have to take into account the roll line of the collar. This is the point where the inside of the dress actually becomes the outside of the dress, where the collar folds back on itself. It's a good idea to try the garment on and test this on your body so that you get this point accurate, otherwise you may see the outer edge of the garment prominent at the collar line which you don't really want. Thank you. 
adjusted the skirt pattern on cutting, the original pleat layout wasn't right. I had to measure the fabric length, take away my waist measurement and then divide the remainder by how many pleats I wanted. This gave me the width of each pleat, I then spread this evenly between the seam allowance on each panel. I repeated this in a mirror fashion on the front and back pieces.
my pleat placement and that they were draping correctly, I went on to add the pockets at the side seam. I always add pockets to a dress and I do have a tutorial in my videos of how to do this if you wish to watch it. I will put the link up but it is a really simple easy way of hacking a pattern that you should always do. fastens with eight buttons up the center front. My machine does have a one-step buttonhole function and it does it really quickly and simply and reliably. I would recommend looking for this feature in a sewing machine if you are looking to buy. To open the buttonholes I always apply frayed check on both sides and then use a modeling knife to carefully cut open each button in a vertical motion, avoiding all the threads. If you use this technique, you will avoid any fraying. The buttons I matched up on the other side and tied on by hand. Level a hem either wearing it on yourself or on a dress form. You will always need to let the dress hang at least 24 hours, sometimes longer depending on your fabric, for it to settle into place.
And here is the finished dress. I really love it and it's really comfortable to wear. I'm glad I reduced the size of the skirt so it has less volume. I think it's a bit more manageable now for casual day wear. If I was making the dress again for a fancier occasion, I would definitely invest in the extra fabric and use the bigger panels. If you have enjoyed watching and would like to see more, please like and subscribe. I will be adding more tutorials to the channel in the coming months, featuring some of the techniques featured here. So if you want to see any sooner, then please do leave a comment below with what you'd be interested in learning first. And do check out the cards in my video to see the ones already online.